So just wanted to show some of the daily struggles of owning a 3D printer. My fan failed on the hot end, so this fan stopped spinning altogether. So what I did <clears throat> is I flipped over my control board here to look inside. This is the stock AnyCubic control board, but I've added TL smoothers to it, which were just generic ones that I found on Amazon. And they worked just fine. They actually did help make some of the straight walls and things a little cleaner when they're just slightly off angle. Uh, basically where you have something that's doing a bunch of smaller steps, it kind of evens out those steps. Um, anyway, the point is, my fan stopped working. So there's two connections here. This one is for... This one is for the cooling fan for the electronics, which is of course attached to that backing plate. And this other one, right next to it here, is for the hot end fan. So to make sure it wasn't the fan that failed, or if it was the wiring, firstly I use my multimeter to check the wiring here. Put one on there, just back probing parallel to the wires. Focus there and there. Just basically putting it in parallel with the wire being careful not to touch the board or touch them together or even touch these other ones for the other fan. Um, you have to basically hold them in place and then switch it on and it should be always on. So when I did that, I found it was getting 12.3 something volts, which is totally fine because it's a 12 volt system on this one. On the Mega Zero, everything's 12 volt. There's no 24 volt anything. Um, this is the zero with the not heated plate. This is just a cold plate, no heat. So once I found there was voltage there, then I went ahead and actually cut the wires by the fan, stripped the other end. I've lost it up the sleeve now. Anyway, <laughs> I cut the wires, stripped them back, and checked to see if there was con if there was voltage at the other end of the wire where I stripped it back. Um, and there was not. So the problem was in the harness. I quickly found out by giving a quick little tug on the wire that my heat shrink, solder heat shrink, somewhere inside there the wire had broken. So I was able to pull the wire out, which shouldn't happen. So that means I had it done the same as this other one for the cooling fan, where I have soldered and heat shrink them. And yeah, one of the wires inside there broke, probably because the solder connection was right down here, whereas, which is where it connects right here, there's basically a zip tie holding it as it goes back and forth, which is one of the main points that it's bending at. So by having that solder joint there, I've actually, that's why it failed, basically. It's bending the solder joint all the time, which is not as strong as your um, main wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a shotter joint even lower down because I have to extend these wires for them to reach now. So I'm going to put a solder joint lower down here and then have good wire from here up and then the other solder joint up here so that I don't have any solder joints right at that pivot point. And that should help it last longer for the next time and also keep my uh, hot end from having heat creep and melting up into the tube. So. Stuff like that happens a lot with 3D printing. So, either you gotta have a expensive high-end machine and only change components by disconnecting wires and putting on new components, or you gotta know what you're doing with soldering and voltmeters and other things like that. So, yeah, just part of uh, the whole 3D printing journey.